So we now have a general procedure for designing controllers, uh, which is pole placement. And the whole idea there is we pick our case such that the desired eigenvalues line up. We also, in the last lecture, learned when it works and when it doesn't. And the key uh, characteristic there was controllability or complete controllability. We can do pole placement if we have complete controllability. If we don't, we can't. Simple as that. And in fact, it's not just uh, pole placement. If we don't have complete controllability, we can't make the system do what we want, meaning we have to buy a new and bigger B matrix. There's nothing else we can do. Today, in this lecture, I would like to unleash these awesome powers that we have on a complicated robotic system, namely a Segway robot. And in fact, this is a robot that's balancing on these uh, two wheels. And in fact, here at Georgia Tech, we have a Segway robot known as the Golem Krang in Professor Mike Stillman's lab. And basically, the way a Segway robot works is that it's a unicycle, roughly a unicycle, on top of which there is an inverted pendulum. And luckily for us, we know how to model unicycles and inverted pendulas. Now, I'm writing plus dot 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 here because there's a little bit more going on. But basically, we're going to be moving while balancing this thing. Uh, so let's start with the base. The base is a unicycle, x1 and x2. That's the x and y position of the base. And it's v cosine psi, where psi is the heading, and psi dot is omega. We've seen this repeatedly. So this is the dynamics of the base, almost. And then on top of that, we have this inverted pendulum. And as we've seen, we need phi, which is the angle by which the pendulum is uh, deviating from upright position. And we also need the uh, angular velocity uh, to describe what is going on here. Now, the inputs to a Segway robot are torques, wheel torques. So the left wheel torque and the right wheel torque. And torques translates into forces, or torques and forces translate into accelerations. But here, uh, in the unicycle, these are our old control inputs, the velocities. Now, since we have inputs that act as torques, we need to actually add v dot and omega dot uh, into the equation. So v and omega are going to be extra states. That's where the plus dot 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 comes from, because what I've done is I've added v and omega as states to my, my model. So what I really have in terms of the state of the system, well, it's the position of the unicycle, the translational velocity, its orientation, the angular velocity, and then phi and phi dot associated with the upright base. And my inputs are these wheel torques, left and right wheel torques. And in fact, if I write down the dynamics of this thing, well, here, I just have the unicycle dynamics. That's all that I'm saying here. This is unicycle dynamics. And then I have all these other derivatives that I need to somehow compute. And if you sit down and do the math very carefully, or you look in a book or something, you got this mess here. Whew, this looks kind of horrible. Well, the first thing we do, of course, when we have something like this is we linearize it. This looks absolutely miserable. But if we linearize it, what we end up with is a, an LTI system. And in fact, it's x dot is a, x plus bu. And I should point out that what I've done is I've linearized this around xu equals 0, 0, which means that I have 0 torques. And the position of the robot is at 0. It's looking at the x direction. And the pendulum is looking straight up. So I'm linearizing it around 0, 0. And if you do that, you get the following a and B matrices. Obviously, I'm not going to ask anyone to uh, <laughs> memorize this. I'm just showing you this is where the A and B matrices came from. Now, before we even attempt pole placement, let's make sure that we can indeed do it. So the first thing we have to check now for this system is controllability. And this is too big, right? So I'm going to go to MATLAB right away and write, here's the controllability matrix on my A and B. Here's the rank. And out comes 6. Does anyone remember what n was in this case? Well, I do. n was equal to 7, which means that the rank of the controllability matrix is not equal to 7. So this is not a completely controllable system. 
And the problem here is the unicycle. We've already seen that when we linearize the unicycle, the dynamics gets messed up. We can't move in the y direction. I don't know if you remember that, but if you say an x and y is the position of the unicycle, then we had y dot equal to zero. What that means is we have no way of moving sideways, basically. So the unicycle is what's making life hard for us here. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to ignore the unicycle, say that the position and orientation of the base, I don't care about that. But what I care about is the velocities, how quickly it's moving and how quickly it's turning. So I'm going to shave off x, y, or x1, y, x1, x2, and psi from the state space and get a smaller system that has as states the velocity, translation of velocity, angular velocity, and these fine phi dot associated with uh, the pendulum. If I do that, I get a 4 by 4 system with the following A and B matrices. Again, the actual numbers aren't that, that important. Well, I go to MATLAB. I write rank controllability matrix. I get the answer being 4, and in this case, n was equal to 4. So if I shave off the unicycle base from uh, my system, I get a completely controllable system. Now I can start controlling it. The last twist, though, before I do that is I want my system to actually move. So I'm not going to stabilize it to v and omega equal to 0, because that's not what I want. Instead, I'm going to say I would like it to go to v desired and omega desired. So let's just subtract away v desired, omega desired, and then I have 0 here, because I want to stabilize it to phi and phi dot being 0, meaning the pendulum being upright. I'm going to define a new state, x tilde, which is my old state minus this delta, which is the thing that I would like to stabilize it to. So this is my delta. So I have a new state. Well, what's the dynamics of the new state? Well, delta x tilde dot is x dot minus delta dot. Delta is constant, so this is 0. So it's just x dot. So it's ax plus bu. Well, I can write, I can add a minus a delta and add in an a delta at the end, because then I have x tilde again here. Uh, so if I do that, I get a new system. And here is the lucky part for us. A times delta turns out to be equal to 0 because of the structure of A. So I get this thing going away. I have x tilde here. So my new system dynamics is the same as my old system dynamics. x tilde dot is A x tilde plus BU. And now I want to stabilize this system down to the origin, which means that the velocities are actually going to end up being equal to the desired velocities. So we have a completely control over the system. We wish to stabilize it. We do pole placement. And again, like we talked about last time, it isn't entirely clear how to pick the eigenvalues. So I played around with the eigenvalues, and this seemed to give a good response. I didn't want oscillations, so there are no imaginary parts. And I picked lambda 1 minus 19, lambda 2 minus 7.5, and so forth. This is the smallest eigenvalue. It's going to tell me how quickly, in general, the system responds. So with this, I'm going to pick u is negative key k, not x, but x tilde, which is the, the new system I'm interested in. I get my closed-loop dynamics like this. And in fact, the way I compute k is to use the, the place command in MATLAB. So I type in my p, and k is place a, b, and p. So this stabilizes the Segway robot. So now, the last thing we have to do is to actually do it. And uh, the reason why I'm OK with neglecting the unicycle base and only controlling v and omega is that the curvature of the path that's being traced by the Segway robot actually is omega over v. So what I'm really controlling now is the curvature of the path rather than where the actual robot is. And what I can do in the simulation that I'm about to show you is Basically, with buttons, make v bigger or v smaller, or omega bigger or omega smaller. And in essence, what I'm doing when I'm changing v and omega is I'm changing v desired and omega desired. So that's the way I'm going to be giving reference signals or commands to the, the unicycle robot. So with that, let's move to the actual, actually, the simulation of an actual uh, Segway robot. So now we're ready to see our uh, developed Segway robot controller in action. And I'm here with uh, Greg Drogi, who is a uh, graduate student at Georgia Tech, who will be showing us a simulation of the, the Segway robot. So Greg, what do you have to show us? 
Okay, here we have a simulation of the Segway robot. On the left, we have a 3D uh, implementation of the graphics. So you can see that now I'm able to drive it around, uh, uh, changing the velocities, just, just as uh, Dr. Eggerstedt mentioned with the keypad. Um, and you notice a few interesting things. Right here uh, in the top right corner, you see the plot of the translational velocity. The red line is the desired velocity, and the blue line is the the actual velocity. And you see that it converges very quickly to the inputs that I give it. And on the middle, you see the uh, rotation velocity. And you see, because of the eigenvalues that we've chosen, that it actually converges really slowly, but it still converges. And on the bottom, you see that the, the tilt angle um, will always keep the, the robot stable. So I have a question. Are you uh, simulating this on the linearization or on the full nonlinear model? So the simulation is on the full nonlinear model. Aha, so I actually have a question. So linearizations are only valid locally. Uh, do you have any sense for when this breaks, meaning can we make the robot fall over, for instance? Yeah, so if you give it a really big, huge uh, step input on the translational <laughs> velocity, um, you'll see that in the 3D simulation, it goes in a full circle and it actually hit the ground. Do, do that again, that was exciting. Okay. Aha, so there we actually get a feeling for how good or reasonable the linearizations are. And in this case, it's fairly reasonable. You can drive it around, but if you give it really large desired velocities, it actually falls over. Correct. Okay. Thank you very much, Greg. Yep, you're welcome.